Apple's got a new thriller called Hijack. It's a limited series and it stars Idris Elba. It's sort of like Luther in the Sky with Diamonds, except it's not Luther and I'm not gonna tell you what the motivations are. So should you binge it though? A plane from Dubai to London is hijacked over a seven hour flight while authorities on the ground scramble for answers. All right, so this is broken up into seven episodes with the first two dropping at once and then the remaining ones coming out weekly. They're almost an hour long, so watching week to week, it does feel more worthwhile. Now, as the name and the synopsis tell you, the story circles around a hijack of a plane. Right from the start, this builds the tension and suspense. The camera will focus on specific people in the airport or as they're boarding the plane. But what I love is that we can't be sure if that's just a storyline trick or if the individuals will actually have a role. The close quarter settings of all the interactions on the plane, it's filmed wonderfully, and it really creates a claustrophobic and anxiety-ridden feeling. And when we're shown sequences on the plane, there's only so much space that people can travel, but they make use of the area really well, creating exciting action sequences as well as nail-biting time-driven situations. In addition to the drama going on inside the plane, we're also shown how the outside world is dealing with the news of the hijack. We get to watch different agencies and levels of authority try to determine the best course of action while also trying not to cause international panic. We also follow a smaller storyline that involves Elba's ex-wife and her son. And while not all of that really lands or it feels important, there are moments that are very important and emotionally affecting. And one of the best strengths of this show is also one of its largest weaknesses. There is a massive mystery around why the plane is being hijacked and what that end goal is. It's a great setup for nerve-wracking interactions because when certain people come into the mix, they're not messing around in the slightest and the stakes, they just amp up exponentially. But with that, there's also an element within the mystery that feels very unfinished, a huge loose end that just never gets resolved. The main focus is of course the hijack, but the motivations and impetus for it to even happen shouldn't be left with any dangling story parts when all is said and done. Now, Idris Elba, he's great in this. I mean, he's tough, but more of a thinking man. There were so many times where I was just drawn into the character because of the dialogue that he gets. And there's an odd mix of brutal honesty and conspiratorial mannerisms that are employed that can make him off-putting in certain ways, but also very relatable at the same time. And I love that he's an everyman who's just put into a scenario where he chooses to engage. And that doesn't mean that he battles everybody in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He just uses his wits and his skills to hopefully stay alive. But it's not just Elba that shines in this. So many of the actors, whether they be passengers or hijackers, all help to convincingly ratchet up the fear and intensity of the actions on the plane. There's such a heightened sense of danger because we never really know who's unhinged and willing to then fight it out. And that could be either the hijackers or the passengers. I mean, everybody on the plane is like a caged animal and their reactions are completely unpredictable. And that wild card mentality is excellent for building out suspense. Now, sometimes I'm a fan of the week-to-week -week shows, but mainly I prefer a show to drop in its entirety. Now, because this is a weekly release, the storytellers have created engaging story arcs and then complications that are meant to keep us invested. And just about every episode ends with a huge cliffhanger. I mean, a couple of times my jaw was left hanging open when the screen went black and then the credits rolled because I just couldn't believe an action or a revelation that had just occurred was there. And while the plane is in the air, the authorities on the ground are working every angle to figure out what the best course of action is. And through some of these sequences, the stress and the pressure, they're effectively built to keep the momentum of the story at a really high level. This was great because when a scene would take place on the plane and it'd be incredibly tense, to have the focus then shift to those on the ground, I mean, if the emotion couldn't be continued, then the transition would work against the storytelling and ruin everything that has been set up. And the series does an excellent job when the focus is on story areas outside the plane because we get to see different facets and how those stress levels affect decisions while also potentially creating complications that then make everything more exciting. Now, there are some moments that involve side characters. And while I get the relationships that are at play, at the outset of certain sequences, the scenes feel completely useless. I mean, for instance, there's a point where Elba's ex-wife, played by Christine Adams, is giving a university lecture as part of a job interview. And while the sequence does feel pointless, the words she uses are then combined with other visuals and then this building musical score to create a very poignant scene. I mean, sure, it may be a bit on the nose and obvious, but the dialogue is effective in complementing the sentiments and then the actions that we are watching taking place in the sky. Now, I mentioned how probably the weakest portion of the series is how some of the motivations are left unresolved or unanswered. And because of that, the ending, it may not be full of satisfying either. 
I mean, I love that we get a resolution to the hijacking. There is a definitive end to that arc of the story. But when all's wrapped up for all the suspense, anxiety, and dread that had been building, there's a slight anticlimactic feeling as the series concludes. Now, I'm not sure what I was hoping for or how I think it should have ended. And maybe it's just that the emotional letdown as everything wraps up felt more abrupt and then done than I was really ready for. And because this is a weekly release, many times I just recommend either waiting until the end to binge the whole thing or skipping weeks so that you can watch a couple at a time. And I think if you watch this weekly as they release, you'll still be very satisfied because of the engaging storytelling and the high intensity stakes. And when that's coupled with close quarters and erratic and unpredictable characters, the pressure continually mounts, leading to actions that could shock, but certainly will have you chomping at the bit for more. So overall, Apple's hijack delivers when it comes to suspenseful thrills and nail-biting cliffhangers. Idris Elba shines as an everyman, bent on doing whatever it takes to make it home to his family. Claustrophobic and uncertain scenarios keep the show's momentum at a high, but the story falters a bit when certain motivations and outcomes are left unanswered and some characters feel sidelined. But it's an intense ride that's definitely worth a binge. There's no sex or nudity, a ton of profanity, and some brutal violence. I give Hijack four out of five couches. So if you watch any intense series or maybe movies lately, let me know about them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.